Lord, I come.
Under pressure. Good evening. A blessed Monday Thursday to all of you. Tonight, our Lenten journey comes to an end as we enter into the great three days. Looking forward with hope to Easter Sunday. The story that begins tonight does not end this night. That is where we place our hope and our trust. It is also why our service will end tonight without a benediction or a dismissal. After the stripping of the altar, um, we invite you to stay and pray for as long as you would like and then depart from there to come back tomorrow, knowing that God is not done yet. A warm welcome to those of you who are here in the sanctuary, to those of you on the live stream. You too are an important part of this faith community. I hope you'll check in at abidingpresence.net slash here and set your table at home for Holy Communion. On the live stream, consider tonight as we strip the altar here in the sanctuary, packing away and putting back into place your communion table so you can have that stripping of the altar experience in your home as well. We will worship tomorrow at three services. 12 noon and 7.30 p.m. will be our tenebrae services. And then at 6.30, we will have our children's. So I have to make sure I get my times right. At 6.30... We will have our children's service. That's a half hour service geared towards young children and their families. And we'll have pizza dinner beforehand at 545 for those who would like it. On Easter Sunday, we will worship at two services at 9 and 11. The petting zoo will be here from 10 to noon. We'll have donuts and coffee on the patio between services and the chance for you to get your spring family pictures. So come early or stay late. If it's a beautiful day and you want to get your steps in, consider parking at the Burke School. We have submitted all of the required insurance regulations so that we can safely park at the Burke School. We don't have a shuttle, but we do now have the sidewalk that lines the hallway. So if you, sp if you cross the street at the st stoplight that's there at the Burke School, you can follow the sidewalk the whole way up and be safe and out of traffic. But we anticipate there'll be, you know, if you're running late, just come park in the lot. Life will be fine. With those announcements, I invite you to take a breath to experience God's presence surrounding us this holy night and rise as you are able to worship. Friends in Christ, this Lenten season we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and loving each other. This is the struggle to which we are called at baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. On this night... Let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor and enter the celebration of the great three days, reconciled with God and with one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed 
by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Please be seated. For those of you who are worshiping with us on the live stream, hear me speak these words of forgiveness to you now. In obedience to the command of Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins. For those of you who are here in the sanctuary, we welcome you forward when you wish, if you wish, whenever you're ready, to come forward for the laying on of hands and for, for forgiveness. You can come forward um, at two lines straight up towards us. Um, and you can also sit and listen as we sing and remember God's love for us.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. I invite you to stand. Let us pray. Eternal God, in the sharing of a meal, your Son established a new covenant for all people. And in the washing of feet, he showed us the dignity of service. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these signs of life in faith may speak again to our hearts. Feed our spirits and refresh our bodies. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading this evening is a reading out of the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. And if a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. And this is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the second reading this, this evening is from 1 Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you, are also, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children... I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Judeans, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. May the written and spoken word lead us to the living word, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I love to go to the movies. I love to snuggle up in a reclining seat with a big bucket of popcorn and a giant Diet Coke and watch a movie on the big screen. I love the ways in which you get absorbed into the story of a movie in a theater in a way that you don't when you watch it on your TV or on your laptop or on your phone. It's easy to feel at the movie theater as though I am the main character. With the surround sound, I often feel like I'm really there. I'm the hero or the heroine of the story. I can experience the joys and the sorrows of a drama or the heart-pounding action of a thriller right alongside the protagonist. I love to sit there and imagine myself as the heroine of the movie. As we begin these great three days on this Maundy Thursday, I pray that we can get as close as possible to an immersive experience of Jesus' last days. 
we will gather today and tomorrow and then on Sunday with all of our senses. We will light candles. We will turn down the lights. We will commune together. We will strip the altar. We will remember Jesus and we will confess our own sin. We will set these days aside to journey with Jesus on his way to the cross. We will walk alongside Jesus as he has his last meal with his closest friends, is betrayed by one of his own, denied by another, and sentenced to death on the cross. The rituals that we do as part of these holy days are an opportunity for us to remember, to experience, and to meditate deeply on the story. But unlike the movies, we do not get to be the main character. We are not meant to relate to Jesus in these days or put ourselves in his place in the narrative. We are meant to remember what he did for us and to remember how we are called to respond. In fact, rather than participating in these holy days as the hero, we are called to sit with the reality that we are more like the less desirable characters of the story, the black sheep, the villains, than we are like the hero. On this Maundy Thursday, we are right alongside Judas. We are Judas sitting across from Jesus at dinner, letting Jesus wash our feet, trying to navigate a cruel, dangerous, and scary world where violence and disaster and war and death are plentiful, and where greed and scarcity and deep need run rampant. We walk alongside Judas in a world where temptation and the devil tell us that we are not enough, but that you could be enough if you do this, buy that, work like this, isolate yourself from your neighbor like this, hoard up and save like this. We are all Judas, struggling in a broken world where we will always fall short. But Jesus loves us. And it's not that Jesus loves us anyway or in spite of our flaws. No, Jesus loves us, period. Just as Jesus loved Judas and washed Judas' feet and told Judas of the new commandment, Jesus loves and accompanies us and forgives us too. Just as we accompany Judas this Maundy Thursday, Jesus accompanies us on our other side. We are people of both and, sinner and forgiven, falling short and deeply loved, struggling and wholly cherished. We are children of a broken and weary world, and we belong to God. We will always fall short. We will always sin, but we have been loved, we are loved, and will always be loved by God. But what do we do with that belonging, with that love? We come to the table. And we return to the table. We return to the table often to remember how much Jesus loves us and to remember his commandment. We come to remember because Jesus asks us to. We come to the table. We remember who loves us. And we remember that we are having a taste of the promise that awaits us with Jesus. We gather together in community, whether we are in person or online, wherever we are in the world, to commune with Jesus. We are welcomed by God around the table, just as the imperfect and very human disciples did with Jesus all those many years ago. We can bring our most authentic selves to God's table, just as we are, sin and love and joy and all of it. We gather and remember the sacrifice that Jesus made with his earthly body for us. We remember the overwhelming love that God has for God's people. We remember the things that he told his disciples on this very night as he prepared to leave them. And we follow the commandment that Jesus gives us. 
We don't follow the commandment to love our neighbor or else. We don't love our neighbor in spite of their flaws. We don't love our neighbor as long as they do this or that. We love our neighbor. Period. On this Maundy Thursday, we both confess how we are like Jesus, and we are also invited to being like Jesus. Excuse me, how much we are like Judas, and we are invited to be like Jesus. We are invited to set aside all of the things that separate us from our neighbors and allow us to then kneel down in humble service to others. Jesus spent years showing the disciples how much he loved them and how to, in turn, care and love others. In the breaking of the bread, Jesus showed his disciples just how important they were to him. And Jesus shares that with us when we gather at the table also. Just as we are shown God's love through the Lord's Supper and through the generous acts of our neighbors, we are welcome to similarly show the love of God to others. Jesus says that they will know you are my followers by your love for one another. We are to be known by our generosity, by our kindness, by our mercy, by our love for neighbor. What a reputation to uphold. But Jesus reaches out to us through the words and the traditions passed down to us to invite us into that commandment, into that reputation, into that beautiful and unendingly difficult work. Jesus invites us to be among the disciples at the table. So as we walk along this journey together on these holy days, may you ex your experience be immersive. May you remember the four-dimensional, tact tactile, and real experiences that you have of Jesus. And may you feel renewed in your invitation to respond. May the surround sound of worship and the realness of the Lord's table place you alongside Jesus and his disciples as we seek to be present in community and as we remember the events of those days. May the wine and the bread and the water and the silence guide you along the way. May the days ahead be written on your heart alongside the knowledge that you are cherished and called and deeply loved. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.
together, let us confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He has ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in Jesus, who gave his life for the world, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God, who kneels to wash our feet, gather your church around the world during this holy week. Humble the powerful and lift up the marginalized. Renew our faith and make us bold in service and love to our neighbors. Merciful God, God, whose greatest commandment is love, guide all who govern by the principle of love. Transform unjust human systems that oppress some for the gain of others. Restore communities as places of justice and concern for those who are vulnerable. Send peace to those places torn apart by violence. We pray tonight especially for the Holy Land, the people of Gaza. And we pray for the kinder care families and staff in our own community. Merciful God. God of healing, we pray for all those who cry out to you. Especially we name before you tonight Steve, Mike, Ben, Rose, Martha, L, Sherry, Nathan, Sue, Gunborg, Jim, Richard, Edie, Bill, Ian, Fern, Ginny, Gretel, Carolyn and Miracle, Robert and Frankie, Linda, Helmut, Kim, John, Susan, Linda, Thomas, Kenny, Penny, Jonathan, Elizabeth, Pastor Bailey, Drew, Beth, Mark and Deb, Richard and Joanne, and all those whom we now name now in our hearts and on our lips. Merciful God, receive, our prayer. receive these prayers, loving God, for the sake of the church and the one who loved us to the end, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share that peace in the sanctuary, at home, and throughout our days.
Let us pray. Jesus, you are the bread of life and the host of this meal. Bless these gifts and those who have gathered, that all people may know your goodness. Feed us not only with this holy food, but with hunger for justice and peace. We pray this in your name. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, whose suffering and death gave salvation to all. You gather your people around the tree of the cross, transforming death into life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast, grace our table with your presence. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth, burning with justice, peace, and love. With your holy ones of all times and places, with earth and sea and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. 
invite you to be seated. This is the Lord's table, and all are welcome here. At your home is an ordinary table now set apart. Christ is present there. On the live stream, hear me speak these words to you now. The body of Christ given for you and for me. And the blood of Christ shed for you and for me. In the sanctuary tonight, we will commune around the altar. As you come forward, I invite you to take an empty cup. The chalice behind me will be wine. The second chalice will be grape juice. You can put your cup out at the appointed time. And the basket at the end will be for your empty cup. There are prepackaged gluten-free wafers on the credence table for those who need them. What we know, trust, and boldly proclaim is that this is the Lord's table, and that means that all are welcome here.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in a wonderful sacrament, you strengthen us with the saving power of your suffering, death, and resurrection. May this sacrament of your body and blood so work in us that the fruits of your redemption will show forth in the way in which we live. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I invite the congregation to be seated. Yeah. 